I hurt myself today to see if I still feel I focus on the pain the only thing that's real so real so real just like this what you're listening to is real yes and it's really good we keep it real on american brews and tunes here's a theme song you know it's not a mean song it's a good song just as it should song american brews and tunes Jamona, we're back. Yeah. But Michael Jackson's not back. Weird He's... weird times with all that stuff. But huh? that's for another podcast. I'll tell you what's for this podcast. Beer and music. Heck yeah. Even though Michael Jackson kind of is music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. But uh, we, we've got our own music and beer to review here for you, as we always do on American Brews and Tunes. This is episode number 75. 75. 75 still alive. Keeping it real on American Brews and Tunes. <laughs> my name is Stephen Johnston. And my name is Jesse Titus. And we're back with another regular format episode. That Heck means yeah. that uh, Jesse has been reviewing an album that I recommended for him. Mm-hmm. And I am reviewing mm-hmm. an album mm-hmm. recommended by Jesse. Mm-hmm. And as we review these albums, we will taste and uh, review for you two brand new beers. Heck yeah. Um, if you're noticing, wow, Stephen, your voice sounds a little weird this week. <laughs> you're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> you're also wondering the same thing? No. I'm sure there's probably two people wondering, so they can... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, them yeah, yeah. I've got uh, myself in a bit of a tiffy right here. <laughs> in a, a wee bit of a tiff. A cold tiff. A cold... Cold tiff. Car tiff. Yeah, cardigan. Cardigan. <laughs> um, I was watching Dumb and Dumber recently. <laughs> really? And uh, there's this funny line. Uh, do you remember when they get pulled over while they're... Well, in that. Uh, Jeff Daniels is driving, and yeah. Jim Carrey's in the seat peeing into a bunch of beer bottles. Oh, yeah. And they get pulled over by the cop. <laughs> yep. And he, Jim Carrey keeps handing the beer bottles to Jeff Daniels because he keeps filling them up. And so Jeff Daniels is holding a bunch of beer bottles filled with pee. Yeah. And the officer pulls up to the window, and Jeff uh, uh, Daniels pulls his his uh, <laughs> his the, his garment that he's wearing like in front of the bottles so the officer can't see. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> what does he say? I don't know. It's been a long time since I've seen he that says, movie. He says, pull over. Like, oh, he's on a motorcycle driving yeah. next to him. He says, yeah. pull over. And Jeff Dan says, it's a cardigan, but thanks for noticing. <laughs> <laughs> it's the stupidest line ever, but it's the first time I picked up on it. And I, I, love I, just, that. I laughed so hard. <laughs> it's it's so cardigan, stupid. <laughs> pull over. <laughs> it's so dumb, but it. Anyways, it. back to I my, my voice. so funny. I got a cold, so I, I'm a little congested <laughs> and, and uh, deep voiced, like Johnny yeah. Cash, the man yeah. in black. Yep. <laughs> um so that's that um this week i will be reviewing for you an album by the artist andrew bird the album's called armchair apocrypha apocrypha and what will you be reviewing Jesse? i'll be reviewing an album by the band the flatliners called inviting light wow that sounds like a welcoming album it sure does for all things light for all things light <laughs> before we get to those albums the though, beer's not uh, gonna be light yeah let's talk about some beer that's not light yeah, it won't be dark. No, it just won't be light. Yeah, uh, what did we have? I don't remember what we had last week. Doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, last week was that one off for uh, what was that one off? I don't remember. The shins, heartworms. The shins, yeah, heartworms. Yeah. I believe we reviewed a stout. So neither of us have stouts this week. We each have different beers from different breweries. Mm-hmm. This week I'll be having something from a brewery that we revisit from time to time on this podcast. Always, it's Bearded Iris. Heck yeah. Um, but this week, it's a collaboration between Bearded Iris and Burial Br- Beer Co. Have you ever heard of them? Um, yeah, I have. Have you ever had anything from them? Are they, they're in Asheville, right? Yes, they're from Asheville. Um, and this beer is called Lunar Fire. And I'm going to read for you the little description from oh. Untapped. It says, An incandescent pyre of hibiscus, raspberries, vanilla beans, ruibos tea, and lactose. Built together with our comrades of Barrio Beer Co., whilst harnessing the magic of January's Super Blood Wolf Moon. Ooh. Super Blood Wolf Moon, huh? Ooh. Sounds scary. Ooh. 
How? <laughs> how I get the moon? How? How? I don't know what a blood wolf moon is, but yeah, this this beer I believe is from uh, a little while ago, so it's not super duper fresh, but it'll be good. It was uh, there was that super blood moon that happened earlier in the year. Yeah, and I guess they did I guess this they for did it. A, they used that and named the beer after it. Yeah, you know the moon's up in space. Anyways, what beer I'm, are you having? I'm having a beer from uh, Monday Night Brewing Company. I believe you've had that something also from the has podcast. to do with space. Oh, but it is not the moon that that's in space. It is lettuce. Oh, lettuce. This beer is called Space Lettuce, is and it's a double IPA, or as some people call it, India Pale Ale. Some people. <laughs> some people do. I don't know. What about Imperial Pale Ale? That could be it. But I believe it's it's generally going to be India Pale Ale. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Um, but anyway, I will read you what this beer is all about. <clears throat> A space crafted double IPA, dry hopped three times, resulting in a cosmically aligned hop encounter. Which hops? Glad you asked. <laughs> Citra, Mosaic, Simcoe, Mandarina, Bavaria, Simcoe, and Breath. I don't know how to say this word. Equinot? 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 Let, Two me, see ro- Let me see the word. E Q. A U N O T. Uh, Equinot, I guess. Equinot. Two, uh, and then there's a, there's a period. Two rows, two row. Carapils, Pilsen, Munich, M- Munich malts. Give this one a great backbone too. Oh, so it's like they use Pil- uh, Pilsner malts. Yeah. Curious. Very curious. So I'm I'm pretty excited to try this one. Very curious. I wonder if it'll taste like space. It probably will. And lettuce. Let us uh, pour our beers out and compare the colors. I'm really curious if they're going to look the same. I'm curious as to what your color is going to be because I'm I'm just interested about that hibiscus. Yep. It's like a blood orange color. It does almost looks like tea mixed with beer. Maybe that's what it'll taste like too. Perhaps. Actually, it's more like a rosé color. That looks pretty interesting. It, it, it does have a dark... It's, it's hard to describe that carroty color not carroty but it's it's like an orange red kind of a, a deep slight a pink deep. color yeah it kind of looks like the color of a grapefruit and it's nice and hazy looking now what's the color on your beer look like it's that's pretty Mine, mine's looking kind of like a normal kind of straw color it kind of look yes it looks like a pretty good hazy ipa not like super duper hazy but it's clearly not see-through yeah it's definitely not um, hazy but there there are quite a few bubbles going on in here though nice it looks pretty good. Let me give it a little sniff ski. I'm I giving think... I'm giving mine a sniff ski, and it's uh, it it smells pretty fruity. I'm definitely getting that raspberry in there, and a little bit of hop. It smells pretty good. Yeah, mine smells pretty good too. I'm kind of like what a normal double IPA would smell like. Well, that's hoppy. Good. That's a good thing. And delicious. Now, what say you that we uh, say the magic word and try our brewskis? Should we? Yeah, you go low, I'll go high. All right, I'll go <laughs> low with my anyway. my low cold voice. Yep. Shibbidabipoo tow. <laughs> sounded weird. Down the hatch. Ooh, delicious. Mm. This has that classic um, bearded iris taste because mm-hmm. that yeah. everything kind of has that similar taste from their brewery. Yeah. Um, but I'm getting, I'm definitely getting that sweetness from like the vanilla and that creaminess from the lactose. Um, I'm not sure if I'm confusing the raspberries or the. The hibiscus or the the yeah. ruibos, but or maybe it's like all of them kind of combining. But it's yeah. very nice. Yeah, it has a little bit of a tea after flavor, but I think I get the raspberry and hibiscus up front. Nice, very nice, very nice. Mine, uh, mine tastes pretty good too. Um, it definitely does not taste like space or lettuce, but it definitely tastes like a good double IPA. It has like a really nice. I see what they're talking about with that malt backbone. Yeah, it is pretty like, it it's like kind of thick mm-hmm. and. It has a heavier feel than a normal double IPA that I yeah. that I've had, so it's pretty good. That would be kind of crazy if a beer was able to taste like lettuce because I don't know what lettuce tastes like. It doesn't really taste like anything. Oh yeah, I know. So that'd be like our beer tastes like lettuce, and then you drink a glass <laughs> drink of water, it. and you're like, I guess so. <laughs> well done, guys. Essence of lettuce. Essence of lettuce. Anyways, like we always say, if uh, the beer tastes different to us as it warms up, we will report back to you at the end of the episode. Otherwise, uh, shall we dive into the albums? We shall. Uh, I believe I went first recently, so I'll let yeah, you go first. I can go first. Um, so Save I'll, the best for first. Yeah. 
<laughs> so this album is called Inviting Light by the Flatliners. It uh, came out in 2017. Their most recent album. Yes. And uh, you know where they're from, correct? Canada. A. A. From Ontario, Canada, eh? And, uh, yeah, the band was formed in 2002, so they've been playing music for a while now. Yeah. Have you listened to their early stuff? Little no, preview? but preview is it action? like uh, ska and like punk? Way more ska focused, and his voice is so different sounding. Is it really? Like here, he's got more of like a, a little bit of a gruffer voice, and I don't want to yeah. say like, um, like uh, who's the guy who who's sings What a Wonderful World, Louis Armstrong? Not Not like that gravelly. No. But he, can, he has got a graveliness to it. Yeah, whenever he like does his screams, which I really, really like, it's it gets really like gravelly. Less, then, his, his earlier stuff's less gravelly, more angsty screams. Okay. Yeah, more of a higher register. But he I'd say. is, uh, the, well, the singer is Chris Cresswell, right? Yes. yes. And he can, he can transfer between that gruffness and a really clear voice seamlessly. Like on this album, it's essentially seamless, which is really, really nice to hear. Um, Anyway, I'm going to get started with track number one. Uh, the track number one is called Mammals. Um, it's kind of a, I think it's a good opener. It's a good start to the album. It uh, starts off kind of slow, slower, and give, it kind of gives you a good feel for what's to come. It is a good start to the album. Yeah, I think so. That nice little build up at the beginning, the intro. Yeah. yeah. And this is where you kind of get a feel right away for how his voice sounds sonically and how the whole album is going to kind of sound sonically very much so which is really nice um i believe this song is about human nature Could and be. how i don't know a lot of his uh or a lot of the lyrics aren't really direct all the time in his in his uh songwriting yeah we find a lot of songwriters that are similar to that that you can kind of guess what they're saying yeah but so from, it's hard to tell sometimes. from what I could glean from the lyrics, um, kind of about how people make mistakes and that like they're we're only human and it's kind of tough to deal with that, especially if you are like friends with someone or you're like you're really good friends with them or you like love them or whatever. We're just um, mammals. Yeah, we're all just mammals. You know, we got hair. Whales are mammals. They don't have apparently hair. they have little hairs. Do they have hairs? Apparently. I think so. That's, they also, why that's why they're mammals. They also breathe air. Yeah. Same with dolphins. Through their blowholes. <laughs> I was going to say they're mouth breathers, but they're not. They're blowhole breathers. <laughs> they're blowhole breathers. <laughs> I'm a mouth breather right now. <laughs> oh. What is that? Is that a term for zombies? No, for someone who's like slow and dumb. Mouth breather? Oh, okay. You're a mouth breather. You're a mouth breather. Yeah. That's kind of a weird term, isn't it? Like if you imagine like someone who's like stupid, they're like, just they're like, what? <sighs> what? Yeah, like that, it's just like yeah. a not a nice thing to say. Yeah, it's really not. But it's also just kind of stupid. It's just it's a goofy insult. It is. There are a lot of of goofy insults. Like uh I can't think of any right now. You ding dong. <laughs> you uh patootie dip, head. Dipstick. Dipstick. <laughs> Cuz like a dipstick is literally how you, like how you check your oil levels in your car. Very useful. Yeah. Unless you don't know how to read it. <laughs> it's pretty simple. <laughs> it is. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> enough about random insults and, and whales. And dipsticks. Wouldn't that be cool if there was a dipstick for a whale? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, his blowhole's a little off. Check his whale dipstick. <laughs> <laughs> his whale dipstick. <laughs> Hold on, i got to clean it off with the paper towel first. It's the water mammal dipstick, you see? You can transfer from whale to dolphin. <laughs> the water mammal dipstick. They use them at SeaWorld. <laughs> oh, gosh, they Actually, I, I believe they, they have phased out whales at SeaWorld, right? Well, is uh, what's... Whales are... Is it just like blue whales and... Or are... Uh, they phase out killer whales, Or are killer whales yeah. considered whales, too? They're whales, yeah. Because what's the actual name for killer whales? Oh, I can't remember. Belugas? It's... No, that's a completely different whale. Um, um, it's like orca, orca, yeah, orcas, yeah, yeah. They're they're whales. <laughs> they're whales. <laughs> anyway, back to uh, back to the flatliners. Yeah. Uh, track number two is called "Hang My Head." Good one, and it's a rager. It's so good. This is where you really get his gravelly you voice. Really get his scream in this yeah. one. It sounds um, painful. And from what I can tell, 
this song is about how people are concerned with their self image or like too concerned with their self image and how that's annoying. Oh, he thinks that it's annoying and dumb to be concerned about that. Yeah. Agreed. Um, uh, self image is after all not that important. No, it's really not. But people put some, some value on it. Yeah. I mean, a lot of, it's kind of tough now with, uh, social media and whatnot. Oh yeah. It's, it's very important now. One, uh, one of the lyrics from the song is, uh, he says, preoccupied with looming death certificates and whatever's trending next. <laughs> so I think this song is basically about how. I hang my head. Yeah. How it's uh, it's annoying or like you shouldn't be concerned with that. Like that's not what's real. Like that's not. I was like you're making a sigh like. <sighs> yeah. I I hang my, my head. head. Ah, I would I uh, hang my head. I would I would try to do it the scream that he does, but I don't you'll you'll hurt can. your voice. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how people do that. I don't know. There Smoke must a lot be of cigarettes. There must be like a certain way <laughs> that you like manipulate your throat. I hope he's doing it properly. Yeah, because there is a proper way to do it. There is where you won't hurt your vocal cords. It sounds like it hurts. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, that's a dope song. Great the song. The chorus is really catchy. It's great. Because all my friends are nervous wrecks. It's very good. Super catchy. Yeah. Soup's catch, yo. Um, I'll, I'll say this right now. Uh, when I first listened to this album, I was like, hmm, I don't know. But as I, as I kept listening to it, it has slowly but surely become one of my favorite albums right now. I knew you'd enjoy that it's, one. It's, it's killer. Such a, such a great album. Um. But anyway, on to track number three, which is called Nicotine Lips. Ooh, this is one of my favorite ones. Yeah, on it's album. a really good one. Um, he he uses a really cool metaphor, um, a cigarette metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the lines he says is, smoke your life down to the filter. Till you're, Til you're coming close to blowing close smoke. To blowing smoke. So recognize your ghost is running out of rope. Um. I joke. believe I believe this song is uh is kind of about dealing with uh complacency and dealing with uh how like creativity and how sometimes you stifle that. Um yeah. Un- unwittingly sometimes. You can see that. Um but one the line in the one of the, the line in the first chorus, he says, Forever hide the shame of your stifled creativity which is uh kind of bad. So I think this is a album or not an album, a song about having the courage to kind of like act on your creative, the creative things that you're doing in life. Yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of interesting in this song too, cause you kind of see how he frames his choruses. Um, in this song, the chorus structure is the first chorus is a and B. And then the second chorus is a prime and B. <clears throat> so just to kind of switch it up. But, yeah. But Lyri- keep, uh, he, he switches refrain. it up lyrically. Yeah. So keep it's, it's pretty interesting. Melodic refrain, but yeah, same melodic refrain, but yeah. different, different lyrically though. On to Tony Styles, Tony Sly style. Yeah, I kind of want to start trying to do that more. Oh, I do that sometimes. I've got a couple songs. Yeah, where I was like, guess to Tony Sly it up. Make sure I change them vocals up, yo. <laughs> anyway, on to track number four. It's called Indoors. This is also a great song. Um. This is one with that guitar line, right? Yeah. Keep me from coming down. Cool enough to feel. Usually they got nice dynamics in this song because the yeah. the verses is just like that slow like guitar. Yeah. Well, I've been thinking. And mainly drum and vocal. Yeah. Uh, and, and then, then in the, the chorus, chorus, it's really, really full. It's a nice, nice full full band. Yep. And I think I think this song is also kind of about dealing with complacency or having like dreams and not acting on them. Um, the second verse, in the second verse, he says, Because I've been frozen down to my teeth. Come on and warm this dead misery. And I've been listening to every word spoken inside and underneath, behind the breath that you can't see. 
So like kind of dealing with like inner struggles and oh yeah, trying to figure figure life out. That kind of seems like what this whole album is about is dealing with inner struggles and uh realizing that the inner voice yeah that's always telling you what to do or what to not do like oh. a little imp or gnome in your head a little gnome a little gnome up in your head up in your hizzy <laughs> um on to track number 5 it's called human party trick it's a dope song as well I believe this was the the single they pushed off of the record. Was it? I believe. I like this song a lot. Yeah, it's. Pr- I, I like this one too, but it's probably my least favorite on the record. Huh. I would never skip it, it because I think every song is great on here. Yeah. Um, but it's probably the least of my favorites. Yeah, I think every song every song is fantastic on yeah. this album. No skippers. Um, Unless this... you're Gilligan. <laughs> then there's one skipper. <laughs> Oh my god! A three-hour tour, a three-hour <laughs> tour. I'll tell you what's a three-hour tour: the new Avengers. That's a three-hour tour yeah. of life. Uh, oh man, I so still good. To, I still have to watch that. Man, you're gonna love it. It's great. I was gonna suggest we do that tomorrow, but then, I then you reminded me that we are going to a concert. <laughs> We're going to see some forty-one, yo. Yeah, in a small cool. venue. It's probably like a what would you say, like five hundred, five to six hundred capacity venue. Yeah, it's sold out in a day. I think. Yeah, um, we. Did you you buy your ticket like right when it went on sale? Right? Yeah, and then I texted you. I was like, some forty one tickets." Yeah. Um, they're they're doing a tour like called the Personal Space Tour, so they're just, they're purposefully going and doing small club yeah, shows. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Yeah, so I'm excited for it. That's a cool idea, I think. Yeah, I, I agree. Kind of like going back to their roots a little bit. I haven't seen them ever do a full set. I've seen them twice on the Warp Tour. Yeah. So they had their thirty minute sets, and it was they're great both times. But I, I really want to see them do a full set. Is uh is anybody opening for them? Probably, but I have no idea. I have who. no idea who either. Yeah. But anyway, on to or back to Maybe track. Maybe it's the Flatliners, <laughs> Canada bands. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that'd be awesome if it was, dude. It would be just like surprise, like surprise. The Flatliners are here too. I've seen the Flatliners twice, and both were opening times. And after listening to this album, I want to see them now. Yeah, I, I saw them wait before this album was was released. It was, really? it was back when they were more in their ska days. I saw them open for No Effects. It was great. Nice. Um, I vaguely knew who the Flatliners were, and then after I saw them, I was like, "This band's great!" And I, I bought all their albums that they had yeah. out at the time, yeah. and then. I saw them in Boston open for Less Than Jake once. Also nice. great. That's pretty dope. Yeah. But anyway, back to track number five, Human Party Trick. Um, I really like the the metaphor of that, of feeling like a human party trick. You're just there to please You're just others. there to, yeah, entertain or yeah. whatever. Um, dance, monkey dance. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Uh, but I think this song is about him trying to deal with that and trying to kind of take control of that um, based on the last chorus. Well, as the Lyric Genius says, the outro chorus. The outro chorus. <laughs> there, sometimes they label things very strangely yeah. on Lyric Genius. I think they leave it up to the uh, the users. Yeah. But anyway, um, uh, he says, Yeah, so now that I'm the artist, I can paint the picture pale. I can twist my words, the overture, to finally feel what's real. I think, I hope it's real. I think I hope it's real. Yeah, he bells that do, out. Do. Do, 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 do. I love the love that bass line in the yeah. song. It's so catchy and just awesome. Um They did the first five songs for Audio Tree Live, right? Might have been six. I don't know. But if you want to watch a good live performance, look up them on Audio Tree Live. And I believe it's also on Spotify. Oh, that session is on Spotify? Yes. Oh, well, look it up wherever then. What is the name of the sixth song? The sixth song is Unconditional Love. Yeah, because they definitely do Unconditional Love. Oh, yeah, you're right. On yeah. Audio Tree Live. So yeah. I, I, they play it in, in order also. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty cool. Anyway, on to that song, Unconditional Love. This song is very different. Oh, yeah. From uh, from what you, we have already heard in the album. Yeah, this one switches it up big time. Super good, though. It's way slower, and it starts off with that kind of chromatic guitar line. Not really chromatic, do, but... Do, 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 I imagine like a rock and roll band playing that in a smoky bar. Yeah. Like that, That yeah. the, the first part of it. Or just the whole song. Yeah. It's one of my favorite songs on the record. Mm-hmm. Um, the chorus is just two lines. Show me something unforgivable because nobody's love is unconditional. unconditional. Yeah. So I don't really know what he's saying with that. 
Um, like so he's he, saying that there's uh, just saying unconditional that, like, love isn't real yeah. for humans. There's a, yeah. you could always do something that will that will that will me- that will mess it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I that's what I thought. I mean, I'm not necessarily sure that he's saying that you will do something to mess it up, but everybody's capable of messing it up. There's yeah. like everybody not nobody's love is unconditional. There's always yeah. going to be something that, that can end it. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if uh, if there there seem to be maybe some religious notes in it. He talks about like the writing on the wall. Could be. They 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 have some songs and some other and, records where they're very clear on their stances on religion. Yeah, and he says in verse two, he says, "Keeping quiet about the fall from grace." So like, mm-hmm. I don't I don't know if I'm not really sure if it is. It might not be. In the context of this song, I'm, I'm not Probably sure that not. it would be, but maybe. Anyway. Show me something unforgivable. Oh, oh, oh. oh I love that vocal. Line. Yeah, so it's catchy. So good. Yeah. Um. Anyway, on a track number seven called "Burn Out Again." Burn out again. Burn out again. And I think uh, this song is still kind of keeping with the whole theme of the album about how dealing with life is hard pretty much yeah or as the term that i really like is weight of the world um dealing with the weight of the world and the stress of being a human pretty much (laughs) and uh there's a really cool part in the song where they do the the woes on the bridge Mm -hmm. whoa 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 and then they after that they go up and yeah they do the but same they do like a weird so like really weird effect on the voice where it makes it sound like distorted almost like a guitar but not entirely yeah i think they even maybe double the the yeah, line with do. a guitar uh that's that's one of my favorite parts in that song it's yeah. so so cool yeah they kind of bring it down and focus on that melody yeah it's super good um but yeah the whole idea of that song is like i burn out again on like mm-hmm. because of the stress of life the way to the world burn out again, again. Um, on to track number eight called Infinite Wisdom. This song is dope. Yeah, this is probably the song that sold me on the album because I think Human Party Trick came out first. I was like, yeah. oh, not bad, not bad at all. Yeah. And then when I heard Infinite Wisdom, I was like, this album's going to be great. Yeah, and you weren't wrong. I definitely was not wrong. Um, it starts off on the seventh, boy. I love that. Dominant seven chord. Losing for. Every answer I'll break down that thought I steal my own second hand insignia. So good. I love that they start on that chord because it's not a common one. And I did that in one song and I was like, man, I'm awesome for doing this. (laughs) (laughs) But clearly, I'm not the only person. A lot of other people have done it all. So I'm not that original. Yeah. Um, Is anybody really original anymore in music? Yeah. I'd say so. I mean, isn't it all just the same notes being arranged differently? Yeah, but you can arrange it in a way that maybe hasn't been done before or maybe make new sounds that haven't before. True. Um, like Bon Iver's most recent album, that's kind of original, I'd say. Yeah, that's true. It that's happens. Very true. There's very, there are original <laughs> things that happen out there. Bon Iver. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> bon Iver is not my favorite, but he's original. I'll give him that. Yeah. I like Bon Iver. Yeah, he's more original than he used to be. I'll say that too. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, his other, early stuff I, I don't think was as groundbreaking, mm-hmm. sound wise. But that's I was gonna say that's for another podcast. But we already but did we that already on did this that. podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's for a previous podcast. <laughs> yep. <laughs> anyway, um, I believe this song is about kind of like searching for the meaning in life and getting annoyed by people who like claim they have have the answer to it. Because we're all just kind of roaming around, doing whatever. Whoever says that they know the meaning of life or that they know what happens after you die is lying. Yeah. Just a fact. Yep. Nobody's Uh, been there. You'll never know. Yeah. I mean, maybe one day that'll change. But I feel like anyone who says 100... I'm I'm not going to say anything bad about anyone's beliefs. Yeah. uh, I've got my own beliefs. Everybody Mm -hmm. does, but... Anyone who says for a fact that they know every, like they know that the they meaning know, of life, that they know what happens after you die, that this will happen when I die, it's a lie. Yeah, they don't. They do not know. Faith, I, faith and belief is a good thing. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but I, I think that you got to When someone tells you they know for a fact, 
It's just not that's, true. It's how cults happen. Yeah. Like, uh, like that's the, very true. The Heaven's Gate cult. Mm-hmm. People who killed themselves to get on the Hale Bop Comet or whatever it was. Yeah. Nuts. Yeah. Absolutely pretty, pretty nuts. ridiculous. Yeah. Um, well, there's a lot of other things that go into cults, but that's for another podcast. <laughs> yeah. Are there any podcasts that you know of that just talk about cults? Um, last podcast on the left touches upon a lot of cults. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. They go very in depth about crazy, crazy cults that I've never heard of. Om Shinrikyo. That was a cult. What? Yeah, it's a weird one. That sounds strange. Um, there's a documentary on Netflix that talks about a, a cult. I can't remember what it was called. Is it called Cult? No, it's it's a Netflix original though. So you, if you search the originals, you'll find it. Yeah, it was like this Indian, Indian kind of guy, who was in the U.S. and they set up in this like small town in like Idaho or, or somewhere in the Midwest, and they kind of like took over the town. It was it's nuts. Really? Yeah, it's it's crazy. That's weird. Um, I wish that I could find the the name of it. While you're while you're talking about whatever you talk about, I'll look it up just yeah. so I can recommend. Yeah, we're this we're people. moving on to track number nine called Sympathy Vote. Um, I'm not really sure if this song has a political meaning to it, um, but from what I can, uh, there wasn't really much. This is, this is one of, definitely one of those songs that the, the lyrics aren't very clear. Um, Agreed. But before you talk about that, okay. the, uh, the, uh, the thing is called Wild Wild Country. Okay. Um, and it took place in Oregon. 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 Oregon, Oregon, as some Oregon. people would call it, um, but it, it's crazy. It's it's it's. Uh, what city in Oregon? Seattle. Let me tell you right now because I have the Wiki, um, the Wikipedia. What page. are some other cities in Oregon? There's one more that I know. Why can't I think of it right now? Ah, I can't think of it. Wasco County, Oregon. Wasco, Waskley Wabbit. In Wasco County, yeah, it's this, these people who followed Raj, some guy named something something Rajneesh Osho. It was, it was just kind of crazy, um, but yeah, it's it's worth a watch. It's nuts. Like the people like infiltrate like, like the town, like the, the the people who vote. What are those people called? Like the uh, representatives, town hall type things. Oh, and, and community. Yeah. Like yep. it, it, it just it gets crazy. Weird. They like try to poison the town's wall. Like it, it's, it's so it's crazy. It's so it's so crazy how easily like manipulated <clears throat> we are. Humans are. Well, it's just baffling that this happened. And it really wasn't that long ago that really? it took place. Yeah. Wow. So weird. Yeah. Anyway, I love cults. Track <laughs> track number nine is called "Sympathy Vote." Um, yeah, I know. I already said that. Yeah, you did. Um, the the one of the lines that I like from it is he says, "My mind it races, but it never wins." I'll tell you who's Ryan mind races but never wins. People who are in a cult. Yeah. <laughs> they never win at anything. I'll tell you who does win. The cult leader. Yeah. For a brief amount of time at least. Until they get caught or until they, I don't know. Until they get caught. Cult. Cult. <laughs> Gosh. Um, anyway, on to track number 10. I'm going gonna to go through these last ones kind of quick except for track number 11. I'm going to talk about that one for a little bit. <laughs> okay. Anyway, track number 10 is called Wedding Speech. Oh, great song. And, oh, it's a great song, yeah. Um, and I think it's about, uh, about finding a hope and purpose in life. Um, <clears throat> even though life sometimes feels like it's devoid of both yeah, hope and purpose. Um, the uh, line in the, I think it's the chorus where he says, I'm personifying the wedding speech. Here's to the future. Even if it's bleak, so, you know, like what well, a wedding speech is supposed to be like all cheerful and like good, hopeful good luck and, 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 and good luck in life, life and endeavors. because it's going to be beautiful and you guys are awesome and you know it's going to be great and but he's saying maybe so he's, yeah he's saying even though the future is bleak like i'm personifying the this, wedding speech he is real but yeah. i'm going to be positive <laughs> <laughs> um yes. anyway on track number 11 chameleon skin Ooh. This uh, this song is awesome. I love this song. It's it's very quiet and soft and a little bit slower. It turns um, out mainly acoustic just guitar, guitar, guitar yeah. and uh, there's and drums vocal. in the chorus and a little bit of drums anyway. I mean, it, it comes in heavy later on, but yeah. it's it's mainly stripped back. Yeah, the whole uh, the whole lo- uh, point of the song or the theme of the song is in the chorus where he says, "Dress me up in your chameleon skin." Dress me up. Your chameleon skin. I don't want to remember 
who I really am. Who I've been. Who I've been. Yeah. So, that, so that's the whole idea yeah. of it. Like trying to cover up your hurt and whatnot and cover up yeah. your past. But maybe that's not the best thing to do, though. But it's easy to do. It is very easy to do. A lot of people do it. Yep. It's comforting. Yeah. Pull that blanket of safety over yourself. Mm-hmm. Safety blanket. That warm, comforting blanket. Yeah. That Some d- call them comforters. That blanket that you dance with when you're doing the safety dance. Yeah. Safety that one, dance. That one with polka dots on it. Yeah. Or it's like a, <laughs> a snuggie. Snuggy. A snuggie. <laughs> that's a great blanket. Those can, Those are... See, that's another thing... That's another point towards how people are easily manipulated. Snuggies, man. What's wrong with a snuggie? There, it was all it was all the rage. It was a trend, and people bought bought into it immediately. Cause it's awesome. It's still a rage. They're dumb. They're not dumb. I love snuggies. Ugh. Regular blankets just fine. Can you be still wrapped up in your blanket easily and yeah. use a remote control? Heck yeah. I don't think so. Remotes go through blankets, my friend. No, not always. Um, I'll tell you what. What if you got to pick your nose? <laughs> then you got to wiggle your hand out of the blanket. <laughs> oh, so inconvenient. I'll tell you what. My family had one Snuggie. We share it between the four of us when growing up. Yeah. It's the best. Hands down. I it's, don't think so. It's a reverse rope. It's isn't so good. It like, wouldn't, isn't it just way more like difficult to put on? It wasn't that difficult. You have to like put your arms up. It's essentially a reverse robe. It literally, That's it's all a reverse it robe. It's so good. It's, it's the best. It's stupid. You've never used one, I my hate friend. Them. Have you tried one? Yes. Maybe. I can't Probably remember. not, because you would love it if you tried it. <laughs> I love the Snuggie. And I'll tell you what, sometimes when I was feeling lazy, I didn't put my arms through the hole, and it worked just fine as a regular See? blanket. See? And you, you know don't what? need the arm holes. You know what? When I was like, I got to change the channel, crap. My arms aren't through the holes. <laughs> I, I regretted did not you, putting did through you, Did you put your arms through the holes then? Yep. Every time. <laughs> Sometimes I used to, we had this little Karen Terrier dog. Sometimes I used to like to put him in the armhole, stick his head out. <laughs> he loved it. Did, little Buster. Did he loved yeah, it. He loved it. He was um, a simple dog. But enough about that he chameleon was a skin. Dog. Anyway, on to track number 12 called No Roads. Uh, oh, super so catchy song. I and love how it builds up in the first verse with yeah. the, musically with the guitar. Yep. It's so good. Yep. And um, I believe this song is about being on tour as a band. And, yeah. and how uh, he, it's like kind of like in his bone, like in his bones. He says it's like deep in my bones. Yeah. Um, I mean, they've been doing that since they were young. Yeah. And I think it's about how that's really tough on like p- your family or people you're close with. Yeah. If you're always on the road, however many months out of the year. Yeah. The first line he says, uh, she said, I can't take this no more. So I'm assuming that. It's I like his girlfriend or maybe his mom, sister, someone in his life. All the above. None Grand, of the above. Grandma, maybe. You decide. But anyway, all in all, this album's awesome. Like this will, I always use the analogy of if I could choose 10 albums to bring on a road trip. This is definitely a good this one. This is definitely yeah. one of those albums. I, be, I went to Grammys multiple times to look for it. And I even asked them at the register and they're like, like the we don't vinyl? have that one. Yeah, I think they switched record labels for this one that's mm. to, to put it out. Um, I can find it online. I've just been lazy. I'll yeah. buy it eventually because I think it's worth ha- yeah, owning it's this one. Yeah, definitely worth it. Let's shift gears a little bit, shall yeah, we? Yeah, shift gears way to the other side of the spectrum. Yeah, I'm going to swing over to Andrew Bird's 2007 release, Armchair Apocrypha. Apocrypha. Yeah, so Andrew Bird is a multi-instrumentalist, mm-hmm. um, definitely. Uh, I'd say violin's his main instrument, but he plays guitar, um, a lot of other random stuff. Um, he is probably one of the best whistlers I've ever heard. <laughs> um, that's a strange thing to say. I know. Yeah, yeah. But if you There's hear him, definitely some good whistling on this album. Like if you hear him, it's like, it's yeah. like how does a human whistle that super, beautifully? Like super clear, super and clear. He's got a nice vibrato in his yeah, whistle. Yeah, like weird vibrato in his whistling. I, 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 it sounds like a bird, like Andrew Bird. He's a bird. But yep. it's, it sounds so like he's a fantastic whistler. Yeah. Um, from 1996 to 2019, he's released 15 studio albums. Yeah, he's he's released quite a bit. Um, he was in a band called the Squirrel Nut Zippers for a while. I don't know if you've heard of them, but they're they're the pretty... Squirrel Nut Zippers. Yeah, they're they're pretty big. I have never heard of that, but that's an awesome name. The only band. reason I know them is because Streetlight Manifesto covered one of their songs, and then after I discovered them, I I, I started seeing them all over the place. Huh. 
Um, it's a weird name, but he was in them for a while. Wait, what was it again? Squirrel, the squirrel Nut Zippers. The Squirrel Nut Zippers. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? I love it. I don't know. De- well, depending <laughs> on how you kind of classify his discography, um, Armchair Apocrypha is either the fourth or seventh release that he's put out. Because okay. for a while, he was releasing music under Andrew Bird's Ball of Fire. <laughs> but he was still the front man and writing everything. So okay. it wasn't like Andrew, you know, Yeah. but it was pretty much him. So if you're a stickler, this would technically be his fourth, but okay. I'm not a stickler. So I'd say this is his seventh. Okay. Um, forget the sticklers. You know what I'm saying? Um, this album, on your head, sticklers. This album's a lot of different styles kind of pulled yeah, together. It's um, pretty crazy. As, as I believe you, you said it's very eclectic. Very, I would agree. very eclectic. Yeah, I think he uses a theremin. Yeah, he at some point. It's either a theremin or his whistle. Who knows? Yeah, either one. <laughs> it's hard to tell. Similar. Uh, it's got some indie rock, some folk, um, maybe even some slight, some like weird array like, into avant garde, some yeah. jazz and classical. Um, lots of interesting sounds. Um, but from the previous reviews, if I had to pick, like what. I would say this sounds like I'd say it's like Wilco meets the National. Okay, that kind of um, makes sense. I think it's a, a good yeah blending. Um, and before I, I get too far, I'd say all in all, they're like there's definitely some nice melodies, but there's no big or poppy melodies on this album. Mm-hmm. No, there's like nothing anthemic. Yeah, and thematically it's definitely more reserved. Oh yeah, more reserved thematically. A lot of it has to do about mortality and existentialism. Yeah, for he sure. gets he gets very deep. Um, but he also gets very high to go above my head. Yeah. So he's deep and, and high. I don't know. Maybe he does drugs and he's also really high. I don't know. <laughs> but let's dive in, shall we? Yes, we shall. Um, the first song is called Fiery Crash. I gave it a rating of Cardinal and I recommended it. <laughs> is Cardinal your favorite bird? A Cardinal's a good bird, yeah. It's not my favorite, but it's a good bird. What's your favorite bird? Uh, that's probably the ruffed grouse. State bird of Pennsylvania. Mine would be Represent. the one. State bird of Minnesota, you mean? State bird of Minnesota. Yeah. Great state birds. Uh, state bird of Pennsylvania should be a turkey. They're all over the place up there. Yeah. Gosh. But anyways, Fiery Crash. Um, this song Fiery is a little crash. faster and a little heavier than most of the songs that are to come. Yep. Which I believe is probably why it's first. It's a good uh, energizer, I guess. That's what mm-hmm. I like. I like to have a, a, a big song up front. Mm-hmm. Um not all artists do that, but I feel like a lot You kind of need to. Yeah, kind of to get things I mean, going. I mean, most people, whenever they listen to an album, they start at the beginning. Yeah. I mean, and when you go see a live be, right? live show, most of the times it's going to be a like a, a fat, like a big, a banger well-known song. Yeah. Not always. A rager. But usually, I'd say. Normally, yeah. I um, agree. This song is more of a guitar-driven song than some of the other ones, um, and it seems to pander to mortality or ponder mortality i should say yep um like many other songs to come uh but this song talks about a fiery crash literally a plane a a plane crash Mm -hmm. um like the chorus he says to save our lives you've got to envision the fiery crash yeah uh and he's kind of talking about there's a lot of airport and airplane um imagery that he's talking about like like walking through the metal detectors and seeing the screens and watching even when you're sitting waiting for a plane you're watching the news and he's talking about just all kind of like watching cnn he references cnn the fiery crash the fiery crash um, yeah no i i definitely agree with with that message yeah i mean i've been thinking a lot recently about how you need to <clears throat> accept the fact that you're gonna die before you can actually live yeah otherwise shout out to john foreman for that for that one song that's about that. I can't remember the name of it right now, though. Learning, Learning How, to, How die. to Die. I think, yeah. Great song off yeah. of Winter. Mm-hmm. Winter EP. Anyways, moving on to track number two, which is called I Mitosis. Um, no spaces, though. It's all one word, which mm-hmm. is odd. And I gave us a rating of Hummingbird, because Hummingbirds are really different, and this song's really different. <laughs> <laughs> um, big turn from the last song. Um, it almost sounds like it's Italian or Spanish. And yeah, when I say Spanish, yep. I don't mean Mexican. I mean like Spain. Like yep, f- yep. I don't want to say Flamencan, but like it's a really unique sound. A very, sound. very unique sound, yeah. Um, with those guitar lines. Mm-hmm. Um, like if you've ever seen a Dos Equis commercial where they're talking about the most interesting man on earth, I could have That's envisioned this musically you happening. Guitar yeah. <laughs> okay. That guy sitting there saying, I don't always drink beer, but when I do... I enjoy I a dos equis. Dos equis. Well, that's the the thing I envision. That's pretty funny. Um, 
it's a really depressing song mm-hmm. lyrically. It's about <laughs> being alone. Um, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. Um, he talks about this this like biologist looking in a uh, a petri dish at some cells. Uh, and then it goes on to say, we are all basically alone. And I'm quoting the song here. We are all basically alone. Despite all his studies had shown what was mistaken for closeness was just a case of mitosis. Mm-hmm. And um, in case you remember from your eighth or ninth grade biology class, mitosis is when a cell splits. Mm. So it's like literally one cell turning into two and then those two branch off. Branch off. And so you think you're close and then everything and those, leaves. Those cells that were, or that one cell that was once all hanging out with himself is now split apart. I mean, that's a great thing that, that helps continue life. But yeah. when you're thinking about being alone, it's really depressing. I really like the, um, cause we're all basically alone. Is that whole, the whole feel, the whole feel of the song I, I really enjoy. It's a, Really, it's just a game really, changer for the rest. It's just from, really yeah. strange, yeah. very strange, but kind of cool. Like you hear the first uh, Fiery Crash song, and it's kind of like normal, like indie, yeah, indie, like, a little like indie, indie rock, folk, almost. indie rock. But then you hear this song, and you're like, "Whoa, I'm in store for something very interesting in this yes. album." And it it throws you off. Yeah. Moving on to track number three, which is called Plasticities. Mm-hmm. I gave this a rating of Woodpecker because Woodpecker. Woodpecker sometimes <laughs> are docile and then they go to town, right? They yeah. the, they're not always doing stuff and then brrr, yep meep meep. Um, meep. <laughs> that's a roadrunner, but whatever. Um, this song starts off with some nice plucked violin strings, um, really kind of nice sounding. He like he's a violin player, like I said before, and so it's bound to come back. You can't always be playing with your bow. Yeah. I mean, you could, but you're missing out on some other cool sounds. I think this song is about doing something with your life because life is too short. So again, mm-hmm. that mortality. It, type thing um and the chorus is when it kind of like it's big sounding it's really reserved in the the verses and then it gets heavier in the chorus he says we'll we'll fight we'll fight for your music halls yeah and so he's kind of saying like do something with your life because he says life's too short for cubicle walls yeah is is one of the lines or i think he says to to be a whale in a cubicle wall yeah you don't fit and it's boring and it's not right yeah um a lot of similar themes on the flatliners album yeah yeah, and this is this is one of the few real rock songs on the album. I'd say mm-hmm. there's like maybe one or two other ones, but for the most part, it's not a rock album. Um, but this is one of those songs. Moving on to track number four, which is called Heretics. I gave this a rating of Finch because there's tons of different Finches, and they're kind of meh. They're boring. They're nice. <laughs> they're great. They serve a purpose, but you know, um, this song has some distorted guitars, but it's not a heavy song by any stretch of the imagination. And I am not sure at all what the verses are about. Mm-hmm. Like he is so vague, and he is a lot in these songs. Not just vague, but almost sometimes random sounding. Yeah, like it's hard to put together his string of thoughts. Mm-hmm. Almost stream of consciousness, maybe I don't know. Yeah, um, but the chorus kind of comes together a little bit. Where he says, "Thank God it's fatal, not shy of fatal." And I believe he's talking about life, mm-hmm. um, because if life is not fatal, then we're gonna live forever. Even yeah. if it's just shy of fatal, you're. What's the point? And that might seem like an attractive thing to live forever, but I feel like it wouldn't be. Probably not. Yeah. You'd probably go crazy eventually. Yeah, there's there's a lot of stories about that. That's uh, about Like what? in Twilight, you know, The Curse of Living Forever. <laughs> Twilight. What's that other book? I've never, never read or watched those movies. I've never read a single Twilight, but I've seen them all. Oh, did you ever read or see Tuck Everlasting? No. Similar. Hmm. Drink from that, that well or the from the tree or whatever and yeah. live forever if uh okay what would you do if you lived forever i don't really know i think i would try to go be a monk <clears throat> on top of mount everest well, you, well if you live forever you wouldn't die on, on mount everest I yes guess. i would go up there and live there and just somehow. freak everybody out yeah and be like I am the monk atop Mount Everest. I am Monk Teverest. <laughs> All you mortal people, come do- come up and find me and I shall teach you about life. Something like that. That'd be weird. Monk Everest. It'd be like, you know, I, I thought, I was That'd thinking about movie. this recently, you know, like in Dragon Ball Z, whenever he goes to that one huge, huge, uh, like, platform above the clouds. Yeah, after he takes meets, the road all the way up. Yeah, and meets that one dude. What's that one dude's name? The one weird dude. I can't remember, but they got the weird voice. Yeah, the antenna. antenna. But it'd be yeah. like it'd be like that. Like, oh, if you get up there, then you're then you'll find some stuff out about life. And then you realize it's just a regular 
weird person. <laughs> yeah, because then Dragon Ball Z goes further on and you realize that there's even more. Yeah. But anyway. Back to this album. <laughs> Moving on to track number five, which is called Armchairs. I gave this ring of Barn Owls because everyone loves Barn Owls and they're Dude, important. And Barn stuff. Owls are awesome. Um, this is the song that you get the title from, Armchair, Armchair Apocrypha. Mm-hmm. Um, and this song is over seven minutes long. Mm-hmm. And I'm not always a big fan of long songs, but this song I don't think feels like it's seven minutes long. Mm. So that's a good thing. Um, it, every time I listen to it, it kind of sucks me in. I didn't recommend it, and I didn't honorably mention it, but I'm just going to go ahead and honorably mention it because okay. I think it's worth it. It's, it's, I'd say it's like the, the, the big centerpiece of the album, I'd mm. say. Okay. Um, it's got a slower feel, um, and I, I think it's got a bunch of different sections. I'll, perhaps it kind of switches gears a lot, um, but it's tied together really nicely. Uh, this song touches touches upon, I think, love and time and perhaps the loss of love. Mm. And it refers to sitting in an armchair uh, and being, I think, being in love with the other person in the armchair and kind of talking about time. He talks about time a lot. Mm. Uh, like the, the very first line, he talks about, uh, I dreamt you were a cosmonaut exploring the space between our armchairs, which is kind of a really cool way to look at that. Yeah. Uh, but then later on, he talks about years and like where you are and, and all kind of crazy things. And mm. it's it just, it gets all over the place. But it's it's a really nice song. It's got a lot of good dynamic changes, a lot of crescendos, a lot of just very nice stuff. It's a very poetic, well put together song. Yeah. That's really all I have to say about that one. So let's move on, Moving shall on. we, to track number six. Let's turn it up again. This song is called Dark Matter. It's my second recommendation and I gave it a rating of Toucan. Toucan. Not Toucan Sam, but Toucan. Not Toucan Toucan Sam, just a normal Toucan. Yeah. Uh, This song starts off with some solo whistling. And there's been whistling before the song, but this one you really hear by itself. It's super cool sounding. Um, Maybe you think it's going to be a soft song, but then guitars come in and build up, and it's a little bit faster and heavier. And it might be the catchiest song of the album to me. Mm. It doesn't really have much in the way of refrains or melodies that you can really sing along to. Yeah. But I think it's super catchy at the same time, which is odd for me. To, to hmm. think about yeah that is kind of weird for you because you're all about choruses <clears throat> yes i am and this one doesn't really have it, it has some refrains melodically but some nothing melo- big some melodic things that it comes back to yeah but it might yeah. be my favorite song on the album hmm. just because it's really catchy the whole way through the song explores life and death obviously um through calling it dark matter because dark matter is mysterious and intangible and no one really knows what yeah. it is yeah, that's a really weird thing. Yeah. Dark matter is strange. Yeah, he's got weird imagery right in this song about like throwing away his toys because he was yeah yeah he Isn't loved like one of the operation. first things like yeah I he had a morbid fascination with that stuff and he yeah. built a gun that only shot dark matter yeah uh, but then he likes where is the soul like is it in your is it in your head is it in in the in between the walls of your body like he was trying to like nobody knows or is it like a motorcycle helmet yeah. or like an afro around your head so he's kind of like talking about those intangibles but the big questions at the same time yeah um this was one of the few songs that i really liked upon the first listen hmm. this album was very difficult for me for uh, many listens yeah but then it, it grew on me slowly um still not my favorite album by any stretch but it, it grew on me yeah moving on to track number seven which is called simple x i gave this a rating of robin because we see them all the time robins i hate them they're great you hate robins? Yeah. <laughs> I don't hate them. They're nice. They're dumb. I nursed a baby robin back to health once. I imagine... Really? Yeah. Oh, I think you told me about that before. I tried to nurse two, but a cat got the one. Oh. It was, well, un- it was an unpleasant day, but circle of life. I think uh, <clears throat> robins are the mouth breathers of birds. You don't think like turkeys are? <laughs> no. No, dude. Seen... Turkeys are way cooler They're than robins. Cooler, but have you ever seen a turkey walking around? Yeah. What about pigeons? Mm, that's a good point. Maybe pigeons and robins. Ducks? Ducks are cool. Geese? Geese are cool, too. Geese they go big poops. They, go, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> yeah, they, <do. laughs> they have a nice honk. All robins do is build nests in your near your home and annoy you. But robin <laughs> eggs are, are blue and awesome that's looking. That's true. They are blue. Yeah. Anyway, simple X. Um, there's a really nice Wurlitzer at the beginning. Uh, Wurlitzer. That, that uh, electric piano. Yeah. Oh, um, if it. you don't know what a Wurlitzer, just listen to the beginning of the song and you'll recognize it's a really iconic electric piano sound. It definitely is, yeah. A lot of bands have used it. Oh, yeah. And it's still use it. Great today. sound. Um, and the Wurlitzer eventually is accompanied by more whistling. Uh, it's a great intro. And this is a more softer song that kind of explores some some sonic space and leaving things open a little bit more, I think. Yeah. Um, I don't know what it's about. Um, <laughs> it's probably about like. I, I, think it's how people have mundane lives i don't really know 
Who um, knows? But I like at the very end of the song, after you've listened to it, the drums get real heavy and fast, mm-hmm. like randomly, and then it ends. It's yeah. weird. <laughs> uh, but moving on to track number eight, which is called The Supine. The... I gave this rating of Oriole. Oriole? Yeah, because they're... Orioles are cousins of Robins. Yeah, you don't think about them. They're orange. This song's <laughs> an instrumental. Think I think about them. I don't, the unless I'm thinking Orioles. about ba- baseball, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Baltimore's good, I guess. <laughs> but this is an instrumental. <laughs> what up, Schmitty? Is uh, he still living in Baltimore, do you know? I don't know. I have no idea. What up, Schmitty? Where are you living, Schmitty? I saw him checking something on his house recently, so he's... Oh, really? He's not very active on there, but he checks and stuff. Hmm. Um, this song sounds like a classical composition. Yeah. Lots of strings going on, but perhaps not that many strings because the song's only 59 seconds long. Nice little instrumental, so it's pro- perhaps an interlude to, to go to the next song, which is yeah, called... Yeah, I think so. Cataracts, which I didn't even give a rating because... I don't like this song. Well, no, I don't, might, I don't dislike this might song. Might as well choose a bird that you hate. Um, let me think of which bird I hate. <laughs> seagulls because they poop Ooh, on yeah. people. Seagulls are the worst bird. Those are the mouth breathers. Those, mine? Uh, mine? 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 No, but it's so ridiculous. They Why? poop they, on everyone. They need, they need to change their name from something else besides seagull. Sea butts. Because sea poopers. No, no they, need, they need to take out the sea part because they're everywhere. There doesn't have to be any water. There doesn't have to be a sea. Yeah, but they like to see. They're, they 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 mostly crowd around in Walmart parking lots. <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> so sad. But and I don't, wait, I don't like wait seagulls. For, wait for people to drop food. Yeah. But back to cataracts. Maybe <laughs> seagulls have cataracts, and that's why they're crazy. Maybe. Um, no idea what this song's about. Very confusing lyrically. Back to that random part. Um, I, I tried. I don't know. Look up yeah. the lyrics later. See see if you can find any semblance. I, I have no idea. Um, this song is stripped back, but it's got some nice harmonies and it's got more whistling. That's all I got to say yeah. about it. What's the song called again? Cataracts? Cataracts, yeah. Look, look it up it later. Up, look it up right now. Because this song is more interesting than the next one. Okay. Track number 10 is called Scythian Empires. It's my my last rating, and I gave it a rating of Bald Eagle. Bald Eagle! Because Bald Eagle is the bird of our nation. Yeah. And this song deals with empires and cultures. Sp- yeah, specifically the Scythian Empire, which is like... Back in what in the Middle East? I'll tell, uh, yeah, I'll tell you about the, the Scythians a little bit. Yeah, Middle East, I, Irani, Iranian. Um, but uh, before that, I'll say this song has more of a refrain than most songs in the album. Okay, Scythian Empire. When he kind of sings about them. Yeah, if you remember that vocal line. So that comes back tons of times. Um, the song's still existential, but more on a societal level about like empires, rise yeah, and fall. Yeah, it's, it's definitely more about like the the, the exiting our empire. place in history and yeah. He talks about um, it, it. It's the uh, the people known as the Scythians. Yeah, and uh, they existed from seventh century BC to fourth century AD, um, kind of in the Middle Eastern area, and they were horseback people, kind of like equestrian nomadic. Yeah, nomadic for no, sure. Nomadics. Um, and now we have nothing from them but artifacts. Mm. And so he's kind of pondering when will we be gone and we'll only have left only artifacts. Have artifacts, yeah. And people, our artifacts will be computers phones and phones or, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, computers and I don't know, whatever else. So it's a kind of a, a, a cool song. It's, it's Yeah, it is. It is really interesting because, I mean, I've been thinking a lot about that recently. Um, having, um, listening to uh, Dan Carlin's podcast, Hardcore History. Oh, yeah, I've heard that. Very good. Very long. It's very good. The episodes are like four hours long, which is crazy, but it's definitely worth listening to because he tells, he talks about specific times in history with such detail and like his storytelling is really good that it kind of makes you realize that you are a part of history and that eventually 100, 200, whatever years from now, people will be talking about you, maybe. people will be talking or, about us uh, the way that we talk side, about yeah. like the Romans or something like that, you know? Yeah. It's just so, it's so strange. It's a strange feeling listening to that podcast. It is. Anyway. Let's move on to track number 11. The song is called Spare O's. Like Spare S-P-A-A-R-E. O's. Spare as in extras. Dash O's. O-H-S. I give us a ring of Sparrow because I thought that's funny and I honorably <laughs> mentioned this. Um, this is a very interesting song lyrically. I think lyrically. you mean Spiro, the Pokemon. I do not mean that because I do not like him. Oh. <laughs> He's annoying and he looks angry. Um, but this song <laughs> is, is interesting lyrically. It can be a simple anecdote. Uh, it could be a metaphor for the circle of life. Yeah. Uh, it can even be a message about environmentalism, depending on how you look at the lyrics. Hmm. There's This can be picked apart a bunch of different ways. Um, I'm going to read a 
a paraphrasing from somebody else uh, from songmeaning.com where a bunch of people can give input on, on stuff. Yeah. Uh, and this this guy went to a, a concert and heard him play that, and he said Andrew Bird, before playing this song, gave this res- this, this uh, recounting of, of the story. And oh, here's okay. this guy is paraphrasing. I'm direct quoting this guy. Um, his screen, his handle, whatever you want to call it, is Sean Ra. Shout out, man. And he put this on here 10 years ago. So oh. <laughs> uh, it says, Andrew Bird has a farm somewhere on the East Coast. He had chickens that were kept in a coop. He would try to protect them from foxes or coyotes. I don't remember which. But the foxes or coyotes would keep getting into the coop, and Andrew Bird couldn't protect his chickens. All that would be left of the chickens would be their feathers, which would be picked up by the sparrows and carried to their nests in Andrew Bird's chimney. When he would start a fire in the fireplace, the nests would be incinerated and turned to ashes, which would end up in people's hair and food as it spread across the neighborhood. Oh, okay, yeah, because I, I definitely see the environmental aspect too. Yeah, but that kind of makes sense. But he also talks about crop dusting, also. So, is it crop dusting of those ashes, or is it actual crop dusting? Yeah, he talks about yolks being too thick or something, which, which, like the DDT mess with with eggs. Yeah, with uh, eggs, and also so there's some the I don't yolk, know yolk as in like a burden that you carry. Yeah, so it's it it, it can be mm. read on a bunch of different levels. Mm, that's interesting. Not why I recommended it, though. I yeah. think that's interesting, but why I recommend it is because of the harmonies. Yeah. Um, there are some awesome harmonies in this song. Um, like, it, it's a girl who sings, I don't know who it is, mm-hmm. but it just sounds super dope. Almost, yeah. I wouldn't say Simon and Gar. well, maybe Simon and Garfunkel like it. Just, S- it sounds really nice. S and G esque. Um, and this song ends with him doing his whistle, and he almost, you're like, ooh, bird like. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you hear birds chirping like, what the heck? <laughs> uh, and the birds continue to chirp and segue into the final song, which is called Yanni at the Apocalypse. And I gave this rating a Blue Jay because Blue Jays are territorial and weird and they are obtrusive. Also a baseball team. Also a baseball team. But yeah, they're they're mean sometimes and like always in your face. And this song is kind of in your face. Mm-hmm. Of <laughs> Is it yawning at the apocalypse? Yanni. Yanni? W, or I'm sorry, Y-A-N-Y. Hmm. Yeah, okay. maybe you're yawning. I don't know the act of being in a yawn. Um, but uh, this one's a lot longer than the previous instrumental song, um, like over three minutes long. This one is. Yeah. Um, this one's more atmospheric and spacey sounding. Um, this one is the avant garde kind of weird yeah. sounding yep. song, soundscapey perhaps. I don't know. You can say that if you want. Um, but it's an interesting way to end the album. Not what I would pick, but, you know, to each their own. Yeah. All in all, not my favorite album, like I said, but it definitely grew on me after many, many, many listens. Not in your uh, road trip <clears throat> album list? Definitely not. And that doesn't take away from it at all. I think this, yeah. this album has got a lot of merit. I think Andrew Bird's a very talented musician and an interesting person, and his lyrics are... Dense? Dense, yeah. Very dense. Um, I appreciate his wide array of instruments... Um, definitely and the Same sounds here. that he makes because there's yeah this, that this was, album's all over the place. That was definitely one of the things that I really appreciated about this album. Yeah, is that it's so diverse. It's yes, pretty it crazy how diverse it is, and that almost unifies it in a way. I'd say so. I mean, yeah. there's a, a a sound that goes through this. Other than um, the second song, "I Mitosis," that one's I really think that's the outlier of the album. Yeah, but there's I definitely agree. a sound that that uh, goes across the entire album. Yeah. Um, very interesting. Worth a listen, though. I'll give you that. Yeah, for sure. I'm um, looking forward towards next week. We will be going back to our one-off format, and we're going to review a more new, a, a, a more modern new album, Pup. Their most Pup. recent album, Morbid, Morbid Stuff, which Pup came out band. a month ago, two yeah. months ago. Yep. So it's it's very recent, which we don't always Fantastic do that, album. but uh, it's, it's worth it, and we love this album. And yeah, if you have not listened to any of Pup, Go listen to them. Go listen to them. And then listen fantastic. to this album before so you can be on board with us as we review. Yeah. And of course, well, actually, let's touch on the beers again yeah. before we before we let's, do some housekeeping. Mine's been very uh, consistent the whole way through. I don't think it really opened up at all flavor-wise, but mm-hmm. I think it's it's been stayed consistently delicious. Mine is the opposite. As it warmed up, it definitely opened up. And it, for the good? For the for good, the better? yeah. For the better. Um, as it opened up, the uh, the malt... That they talked about in that in that description really came through. Nice. It's a really like deep, thick multi, uh, multi notes. Now, it's really tasty. That sounds like a delicious beer. Do you think astronauts drink beer in space? 
Mm. I had to guess I'd say probably not. I don't think so. Maybe they do. They're probably not allowed to, right? I bet you the cosmonauts probably drink vodka in space. What? The cosmonauts. Cosmonauts. What are cosmonauts? Russian astronauts. Oh, oh. That's what I was talking about in the Andrew Bird song. A cosmonaut exploring the space between your armchairs. Is that actually like the term for a Russian astronaut? Yes. Really? Yes. And the term for an American astronaut is just astronaut? Yes. What's the term for a French astronaut? Le (laughs) astronaut. Probably. (laughs) Yeah, cosmonaut was, was the Russians. Astronauts. Did they call themselves that? I believe so. That's so weird. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, but anyways, anyway, um, if you would like us to review an album, um, hit us up. Uh, we're, we're always willing to review albums that are recommended for us. Well, does not anything, matter what it is. Anything. It could be Beethoven's fifth recorded oh, by whoever. Yeah. Uh, it could be Miley Cyrus's ha- first Hannah Montana. It could be anything in between. Whatever you want. We would love to review it. Uh, if you've got questions, comments, just want to cheers us or whatever reach out hit us up you can get us on facebook twitter uh instagram, instagram. just look up american bruising tunes you can go to our website which is bruising tunes podcast.com or you can email us at american bruising tunes at gmail.com dot com uh anything else to say before we finish these brews um the only thing i have to say is thank you for listening well let's finish these brews first <laughs> as we always say here on american bruising tunes she bit a people down down the hatch. Delicious. Once again, my name is Stephen Johnston, and my name is Jesse Titus. We'll see you on the flip side, of America Bruce Toods. Here's a theme song. You know it's not a mean song. It's a good song, just as it should song. American Bruce and tunes. Shibbity beep